I'm really channeling my Fulani side right now. I hope you guys are all doing well today. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. If you are new, hello, hi, my name is Belle Michelle. I do fashion videos, style videos. I also vlog my travels here and there. I love natural hair videos as well as a few live and just like this one, university advice type videos as well. If you're not already subscribed, then I would kindly ask that you subscribe to my channel. Also, another thing you should know about me is I have a little brother that's autistic. In a few videos here and there, you'll hear him in the background singing to himself, playing with his toys. I gotta babysit, I'm the eldest. So if you hear anyone going, you, 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 or like shaking something, it's him, okay? He's really cute. You would have seen him before if you're on my Instagram or in other videos. Can't really do much about him, so just... Doesn't he sound so wonderful? I do have a video on how to survive third year. I also have a video about getting placements. And I have a video about life after university as well. If you guys would like to see that, I'll put all those videos in the description bar below. As well as put them in the iCard. If you guys do want me to do a video about my university experience, let me know and I will do it. But I thought what would be more better and more beneficial to you guys is to give you a few tips of things that I wish people had told me or my friends before I started university. So I've literally learned from other people and the people around me's university experiences and learned that okay I wish someone had told my friend or told me about this before university so, so the first thing I wish someone had told me before I started university is how much time you're going to have on your hands particularly in first year first year you're gonna have ample amounts of time and you are never ever 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 let me just emphasize that you are most probably never gonna get that much time back after university because once you start adulting and you have to have a job and you have bills that need to be paid so you need to go into work you can't just say oh, you know what I don't want to go in today I can look at the lecture slides and study or something like that you can't do that well you do have some days where you wake up and you're working you're like you know what not today I'm going back to bed I'm calling in any of my employers that I watch this I've never done that never ever done that anytime I've been ill I've been genuinely ill however I do know of people that do do that because some days you do have days that you're like it's just not not today but yes in your first year at university you're gonna have so much time the best thing I would say is make use of that time so make sure that you sign up to societies I'm gonna speak about that later on but also if you want to do anything like maybe start a YouTube channel start a blog take a part-time job do something with that time that is worthwhile and that is gonna benefit and kind of aid in your self-development use it wisely don't just use it sleeping don't use it cooking for no stupid boy don't use it trying to romance one nonsense girl use it to develop yourself because after you graduate university I remember when I was at uni I was like oh my god I can't wait to finish I'll have more time to do YouTube to do this that and the other and I graduated and once you start working it might be different if you work like say a nine to five or something like that because my job is like a nine to nine sometimes at 8 a.m. to just mad crazy hours when you start working literally time just goes speaking of nonsense boys my second tip is beware of final year boys let me say it again beware of the final year boys even the final year girl do you know what if you're in your first year just beware of the final years not all of them but there's a percentage of them that are predators oh right let me not say that word especially in this whole me too but there are a significant percentage of them that will prey on the fact that your first years and you know you've come in there fresh face fresh eyed you're in university you want to grow the experience and you see this older person who's in final year that's interested in you or they want to be your friend and you're like oh yay oh my god I'm feeling myself oh final year boy wants to get to know me don't do it to yourself like I saw so many okay not so many I'm over exaggerating but I saw a few of my friends like fall into that even me I, I wouldn't say I fully fell into that trap but I had a particular well a few particular final years that tried to Okay, if I'm being honest, try to gas my head. And I just, like, I literally thank Allah and I thank my mum that I had enough sense to be like... I had very much tunnel vision at university. It was literally, I need my grades. Don't come to me with no nonsense. I don't want no nonsense. Hearing about some of the stories, like, after university, I'm so happy that I didn't date anyone at my uni because, like... People are really out here breaking people's daughters' hearts. As much as I say I don't like to talk about my emotions, it's because I'm a very emotional person. There's some things I just couldn't handle. And do you know what? Yeah, I am going to call them predators because some of them are in their final year, but they've been in their final year for a few years. Like Some of them are borderline in 30 years old and they're still preying on young people that are like 19, 20 year olds. I mean, that's a huge gap. Obviously, while you're at university, you want to get to know as many people as possible, but just be wary when you have people that are much older than you coming to you, wanting to be your friend, 
wanting to come over, wanting to cook for you. Listen, be wary. That's a no tip number. Going on to tip number three, be wary of where you're eating. I feel like as students, it was literally if someone says they're cooking, go in here. I'm going here. I'm eating here. I mean, listen. Make sure you learn how to cook. Don't just be eating at anyone's house, anyone's hall. People have different hygiene levels. Okay, not everyone is as clean, and that's something that you will find in university. Not everyone will have the same cleanliness level as you. Don't be that guy or that girl who's known for always coming to people's house just to eat food. You don't you don't want to be that person. As soon as you get your module guide or your uh, module information because you'll have different modules to take in first year, go to the library and get those books on loan because some of the books particularly for me I um, I studied biomedical science some of those books are hella expensive even when you try to get secondhand ones they're still a very very pretty penny but, but a lot of university libraries will have about 10 of those books that they can loan out to people as soon as you get that module guide take your ass to the library and get the books because I guarantee you even if you wait a few hours let alone if you wait a day you're out you're out of the race but even if you wait a few hours some people would have probably already gone and taken it and depending on how your university is you can keep on refreshing the loan refreshing the loan refreshing the loan i remember i had a few books that were literally lived in my house throughout my entire first and my third year and yeah some people might say oh my god that's so bad there might be other people that want to use the book listen it's a dog eat dog world first come first eat first selection think about yourself another tip and this might seem to some people this might seem like well duh but you'll be surprised. Go to your lectures, okay? Please go to your lectures. Go to all the lectures, even the lectures that you feel like, oh, I don't really need this. Go to the lecture, even if you want to just sit in the back, go to the lecture and record the lecture so that you at least have some way of referencing that lecture because trying to catch up using lecture slides, depending on what you're studying and depending on how your lecturers are and their lecturing style. I remember in my first year, I had lecturers who would deliberately take words out of their slides to make sure people came. And just like I said before, I know you're gonna have some days where you're like, oh, do you know what, just not today. Pick yourself up and go to that lecture. You are paying about 10 grand, 10, 12 grand. Like looking at the prices, when I went to university, it was about 3,508. Wow, 3,500 pounds per year. Now I'm seeing courses that are 10, 11, 12K. There is no way in my heart, body, and soul, even if I'm getting student loan, that I am paying that price for a degree and I'm not getting everything out of it. So yes, please go to every lecture, go to every tutorial. In the case if you're doing like a biological science, go to all the practicals. I think for most biological science courses, the practicals are actually compulsory. Like if you miss one, I remember for my course, if you miss one, you had to literally do one long essay that it, it just wasn't worth it. Another thing I wish that someone would have told me is about RAs. So before you go to university, check if your university have RAs on site. Oh, so RA would be a um, residential assistant, different universities universities will call it different things. I was lucky enough to find out about RAs when I was in my first year because one of my housemates, her cousin was actually an RA. And essentially what it is, just putting it in the most simplest term, we basically look after the first years on campus. So anyone that looks after campus, we looked after them from anything to medical situations, domestic situations. Listen, one day I'm gonna try and get like a lot of the people. If you guys are long-term watchers of my video, you remember Kayla and Shala, my housemates and my friends from university, we were all RAs. I, like, I'm gonna try and do a video where we can talk about some of the incidences that we had to deal with as an RA because some of it was mad. One example is this wasn't even from me but it was another RA. So we have things called call out so people will call you out in the middle of the night. So you work a shift throughout the night like once a week. Someone got a call out and they came and it was like a bunch of Chinese students and they had a pigeon as a pet and they said that the pigeon had a broken leg so they were nursing the pigeon back to health in a shoebox in a university dorm room that's not that big. Also had other instances of people running around naked. Like it, I have stories for days when it comes to RAs. But the reason why I say find out if your university has an RA system or has an RA job available is because for my university, if you're an RA, you get free housing. And as a student, free housing is probably going to be the biggest saving you are going to get because they really bump you on house prices anywhere that is near a university. They just hike it all up. Three years I was at RA, didn't have to pay any rent. And I always say this to people, the year when I was on placement, I was still RAing and I was also doing hair. As a student and for that time in my life, I've never had so much money before. Like literally, I was so comfortable. Like, you know when people say as a student, you're going to suffer. I did not suffer, alhamdulillah. 
alhamdulillah like, I was so comfortable check if your university has an RA system now it's not just all about getting free housing that is a major benefit but even thinking about it now some of the things we had to deal with we got paid very very minute amount per month as well but thinking about everything we had to go through we should have got paid on top of free housing but it would just help you so much in saving and stuff like that especially if you don't have a part-time job or anything like that definitely check that out and make sure you apply because it will help you save so much money and it also looks very very good on your CV do not become a university house husband housewife for anyone I saw a tweet actually today where um I think it was a lady from the Great British Bake Off she learned her passion for baking while at university because she took on the role of a mother figure for the housemates that she lived with and she would cook for them clean for them teach them how to cook and all of that stuff and someone quote tweeted it saying I would highly advise that you don't do this me too I would highly advise you do not do that listen once again you are paying 11 12 10k a year to be someone's house husband someone's housewife and you're there seasoning chicken hot wing and making macaroni and know yourself if you don't want to be that person you really do not that is not what you came to university for you did not university is not I know like back in the day like maybe our parents generation you know it was you go to uni and a lot of people found their husband or their wife at university and that is still possible now but the climate has changed and there are a lot of people who come to university that are very useless they've been babied at home and they come to university and they want to find someone that will baby them someone that will be their mother you are not someone's mother you're there to get your degree and your education following on from that actually is about being in a relationship at university i'm happy that i wasn't in any committed relationship when i went to university i was in a relationship but it kind of ended about a month into my first year of university but I'm more of an advocate of don't be in a relationship while you invest unless you know that you can prioritize yourself and unless you know that you're not that emotional and you know that right I can separate whatever might be going on in my relationship to my studies I've seen a few of my friends who they've got into relationships at university and I think as women we really I'm gonna speak from a woman's perspective we undermine how some of us men too as well but when I'm like I said I'm speaking from a woman's perspective how emotional we can be and how things can really affect us just as people in general and I have seen and I have friends who have literally had mental breakdowns not being able to take exams not being able to give in coursework I have friends who have been kicked out of halls because of university boyfriends it's just not worth it and one friend in particular of mine I remember we were talking she and her boyfriend got together when we were in our first year and they're still together now like alhamdulillah I think they're actually getting married to and they're not the only people that I know who are have been together from first year getting married but I remember when we were speaking she was like do you know what as much as I love him and as much as now we're doing good I literally wish I'd never met him because I would have finished my degree so much earlier I would have been so much more focused I would have got such a better grade if I hadn't have met him and if I had met him afterwards because that turbulent time in our relationship had an effect on me and had an effect on my degree it had an effect on her degree and an effect on her and she's a very bright girl very very intelligent girl so she knew within herself like I could have achieved so much more and it was my relationship that kind of brought me down so if you know that you can't separate what may go on in your relationship with the need to study and focus on your course I would advise just listen it's only three years it's only three years use those three years to learn about yourself learn what you like learn more about you and to grow confident and then look for that after now obviously I'm not trying to tell anyone to block your blessings if you see someone and you think he's an amazing man yes I'm in my second year but we can make it work just make sure whoever you're with has that understanding that this is a very important time in my life you know I am trying to get this degree I'm trying to get these grades I'm trying to set myself up for my future so just make sure that they have that understanding as well don't live with your friends D like don't d don't live with your friends now this is something that I didn't really have a problem with well actually I was saved from this but um yeah don't live with your friends and try and avoid with living with a big group of people so try and avoid living in houses where there's like seven group of people I've seen where it's worked for people and I've also seen cases when it's just gone horribly wrong like people fighting each other people calling the police like it was an absolute madness I mean from my side it was entertaining but it just looks like an absolute madness when it comes to living with people just know your friends make sure you know your friends know what they're like to live with make sure that you know their cleanliness before actually living with them because I have seen cases where house sharing has literally torn down friendships like people who were so 
all so close in first year, so so close in second year. When it came to third year, they were literally ripping each other's heads off. Oh my god, this one likes to wash her weave in the bathtub and not clean up after herself. This one does not mop. This one's boyfriend is always around. This one doesn't know how to be quiet. This one likes to play music. Um, yeah, just know your friends. I was fortunate enough that everyone that I lived with at university was absolutely fine. Like, I didn't have, well, in my first year, I had a bit of a, but that was just with one particular person. And I think a contributing factor would also be that in my second, third, and my fourth year, I only had two or one housemate and we were all on like the same level of cleanliness or we were all, we just had the same mindset that, right, we're here to study and we're just really close. And I thank God, Alhamdulillah, that it was all good. But like I said, I've seen many a cases and even in my first year, I had problems with housemates. And a lot of the problems that I saw people had is when they became housemates with their friends and they're like, yeah, this is my Cody, my best friend. Yes, this is my dog, my girl. And you didn't know that your girl doesn't like to wash dishes and she don't like to clean up after herself. So there's some friendships that it's better we don't live together. Yeah, let's just have separate houses. You live with your people, I live with my people. If you wanna spend time at hers, spend time at hers, he's, whatever, it works. But to be in the same house, maybe not make sure you have people on your course that are your friends that's one thing that i thank god i was good at doing because when it came to time for submission exam revisions i know okay this person they're good at molecular biology i'm revising with them this person is good at micro this person is good at viruses this person is good at that you can pull in on people's skills don't just limit yourself to one friendship because you'd be doing yourself a disservice and also there is so many different people like, i'm so happy i got to know so many people at university if you've gone to university or if you've just finished your first year and you have any tips or tricks for anyone please put them in the description bar below i hope you have a good morning evening afternoon or whatever time you watch this video and i'll see you all in my next video bye